What's going on everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the channel and today we are here for a new Madden 24 rebuild of the Denver Broncos. A lot of people say, hey C4, when are you doing Denver? When are you going to deal with that Russell Wilson situation? Today's the day. Nothing happened yesterday to inspire me for today's video. Today is just a great day to rebuild the Denver Broncos. Got a brand new head coach, Sean Payton. If someone could save Russell Wilson, Sean Payton is probably on that short list of coaches you'd feel kind of optimistic about. So we got that going for us. Uh, Russ, it's not, the, it's not the best. 77 with the dev trait. Um, I mean, the stats are still there, I guess, to a certain extent. But much like what we saw in real life, a lot of questions about Russ being the, the guy that can bring Denver back to a Super Bowl. So we'll kind of see how that all plays out this year. The rest of the offense, not bad. I mean, the offensive line, Garrett Bowles. You got Ben Powers coming over from the Ravens. Myers is solid. They got McGlinchey coming from the 49ers. So they spent pretty big money in free agency to beef up this offensive line, which should help. Uh, Dalton is a solid tight end. Some upside. Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy. Healthy Jerry Judy is a really, really bad in the good sense. Wide receiver. He can be one of the best route runners in the NFL. You get Myron Mims, the rookie from Oklahoma. Brings prolific speed. What do we got here? 90? A little bit faster, it felt like in college, but 92 speed, 94 acceleration, not too bad. Uh, and he's hopefully going to be a big time playmaker for us. Uh, he also got Tim Patrick, KJ Hamlin, real depth at the wide receiver spot. And then you got just two vicious runners, Samaj P. Ryan and Javante Williams at running back. And a healthy Javante Williams could be huge for Russell Wilson getting back. He can be, well, maybe we'll combine the two and then kind of be the Marshawn that Russ had back in the Seattle days. But Javante Williams won the but him and like Damian Pierce and like Isaiah Pacheco are like just those runners that like they might not ever be a top five running back in the NFL, but they're always gonna be a fan favorite just because they like 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 a Chris remember Chris Ivory? I remember Chris Ivory because Chris Ivory somehow would just run guys over all the time. And there's like, oh man, Joyke Bell? Like another, just guys that run hard. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just because of the, the former running back in me. But like those are the guys that I always remember. Even maybe over some guys that were a little bit more prolific. Anyways, on the defense, front three, not particularly great outside of Zach Allen. I thought that was great business in free agency. I thought he was one of the more underrated defensive ends. Solid year on a not great Cardinals defense last year. And he's able to turn that into a starting gig here for the Denver Broncos. Rest of the front seven, you got Randy Gregory, one of the dumbest players in the NFL. But Baron Browning, I think, is one of the more interesting edge hybrids. Like, he was he was like a linebacker at Ohio State. Like, obviously, could rush the passer as well. But a lot of people thought maybe he'd be a middle linebacker here in Denver. Start letting him just rush the pass because he's a big-time athlete. 87 speed, 92 acceleration, and uh, I think he definitely can develop for us as a pass rusher. Um, rest of the defense, though, you got Singleton, Josie Jewell, probably more so thinking about Drew Sanders long-term, who's another one of those, like, Baron Browning types. Hybrid, no one knows if Sanders' best spot's going to be a middle linebacker or potentially as a pass rusher, so you're probably going to get a little bit of both uh, in this rebuild. I don't, you know, we, we got to figure it out together. What is his best position going to be? Uh, the veteran safety duo, Kareem Jackson, Justin Simmons is nice. PS2, Pat Sertain, the second X Factor. Let's go. Clearly, corner one. Maybe by surprise, my corner two, as it stands, for the Denver Broncos is Riley freaking Moss. Look at this guy, man. Something stands out about him, and I think it's his zone ability. This guy is a great corner. 91 speed, 93 jumping, 96 acceleration, 95 agility. And I think with someone like PS2 on their side, it's going to be able to take a little bit of the pressure off him. He's going to get plenty of work because no one's going to throw a PS2's way. And I think Riley Moss can, uh, can be a guy for us with uh, Kawan Williams there in the slot. we got an interesting rebuild here. And my goal, as we have yet to have our streak broken, is to win a Super Bowl in every single Madden 24 rebuild. And uh, I'll say this, though. Short leash for Russell Wilson. If he's not the guy, definitely nothing Saturday happened that could be fun to... See happen in a Bronco rebuild. So let's go into year one of this Madden 24 Denver Broncos rebuild. A couple weeks into the season, not the best record, but Riley Moss, the normal dev rookie who we're given the opportunity to play on the other side of the great Pat Sertain, has a potential breakout week five. Hey, just got to do it against Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets. No pressure. Garrett Wilson's probably going to be on you all day because they're not going to put him on Pat Sertain, but that's, that's what happened. Nah, he, he got cooked. It's fine. It's a learning experience. It's growing pains of playing a rookie. But wait, point of the season sitting on two wins. Not, not good. Look at the offense. Not great. 
top 10 passing offense so maybe it's not all on russell wilson defense clearly struggling but for a expensive roster we'll get 11 million dollars look we're literally over the cap right now we're not going to be able to offer any extensions which are you know in some cases really the big one is getting to be picking up the fifth year option of patch of tan but there still are some play like i would want to try to get cushionberry or jewel or kj hamler back but we are in the red we're gonna have to cut some people on top of these guys just walking without us being able to put a bid on them. At the end of season one, it's all bad. It's all bad. Wasn't all Russ. Wasn't all the defense. It was all bad. All phases. Not good enough. And I think, I mean, I don't, I don't have a true read on what Denver Broncos truly feel about this upcoming season. I think it's generally like optimism that Sean Payton can get Russell Wilson to not look like a bust of a trade. And he, that's one of the worst sim seasons I have seen yet in Magic Warner. Probably the worst. 3,600 yards passing, 17 touchdowns, 23 picks. That is terrible. 900 yards, 5 touchdowns. Javante, P. Ryan with 10. I, you know, I guess we got okay scrambling out of Russ. Uh, Corlin Sutton, decent season. Marvin Mims, the rookie. That's respectable. I guess, you know, Jerry Judy, a little disappointing. But at least for how bad Russ is, our top four wideouts. Uh, definitely eight to a certain degree. Uh, Josie Jewell over 100 tackles. Like, how? Okay, if our offense was that bad, how does our defense not have like a couple tackle machines? They were on the field so freaking much. Six and a half sacks, 12 TFLs for Baron Browning, 16 TFLs, five sacks, Zach Allen. Acceptable. Um, not much from the secondary, though, man. No picks, Pat Sertain, only one for Riley Moss. Yeah, it's bad. Looking at the yearly awards, Joe Burrow wins the MVP. I, I mean, I don't have any, any idea if we have anyone particularly close. Marvin Mims for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Raleigh Moss, sixth in Defensive Rookie of the Year voting. And to the surprise of no one else, no other name from the Denver Broncos in contention here in year one. I was kind of hoping at the end of the year we'd maybe have a couple retirements and that would help us out with the salary cap. No, it just got more expensive somehow. Went from minus eight to minus $15 million dollars. And we actually had a retirement in Kareem Jackson on top of that. So it's not only we're in the red even more, we're now down another starter. For the team, we didn't have much in terms of dev traits going in, but we did not lose anything offensive. How did Russ not lose his dev trait? He had more picks than touchdowns. Marvin Mims did have the hidden dev. It popped as a star on the defensive side. In terms of breakouts, we did not have any, man. Really was just looking for Riley Moss. Thought he had a respectable season. Saders was hidden dev. It pops as a star. And at least no regression for a bad year. I hope that this is the low point of the rebuild. We will never be a three-win quarterback throwing more interceptions and touchdown team. Maybe next year. I don't know. Depends how, depends how easy it is to move on from Russ's contract. So we're going to do the only piece of business we can do this offseason. That is pick up the fifth-year option from Pat Sertain. All right, so we can get our books in order here. I thought clearly can't cut Russell Wilson right now. I thought about restructuring it. Like, do I really want that hit, that bigger hit down in future years? It is a bad contract. Like, my, my idea is, like, maybe we do it next year. Maybe next year it won't be as bad for Russell Wilson. Maybe we can straight up cut him right away. We don't need Jared Stidham. There's $3 million in terms of a backup quarterback. I don't think this is going to be a Jared Stidham rebuild. So that helps us a little bit. We could cut P. Ryan. Tim Patrick. This, this might, I feel like he's the guy that like all Denver Bronco fans love, but we just have so much depth at wide receiver and that frees up, you know, six, seven million bucks right there in one cut. Like we literally can't play right now. We couldn't field the team if we wanted to. That is how far over the salary cap we are. Uh, defense. Jones is one of our, we don't really have much depth literally behind him at all. Uh, Traymond Smith, there's about another just under two million dollars we needed 15 oh man sorry now we'll get rid of a punter there's almost a million dollars on a punter i could probably trim an extra one to two just getting rid and nuking all of our team depth how much how what's the damage oh we're over by four all right no we're good we're good after all these moves but let's just peek free agency is always so bad of course, like we miss out the one good one because we have no money. It, it looks like a pretty mid free agency period as well. I think we just got to shift our attention to the draft. We have our eye on a certain quarterback. Now, he's not considered a first-round quarterback, but there is a skill set now, especially for how he is dominating Colorado sports. Like He's the most famous quarterback in the state of Colorado. 
Shador Sanders. We got four Bs across the board. Uh, athletically speaking, pretty good as elite jumping. Great acceleration, great strength. Not a true dual threat, but definitely can win with his legs. And I just know that pretty much every Denver Bronco fan with the hype around this guy wants him to be the successor for Russell Wilson. We do have a first round pick. I don't think we have much in terms of mid round and he's not worth a first round pick right now. It's still very early in that hype process, but I definitely, we're, we're doing, we're doing a Shador Sanders Denver Broncos rebuild. Pulling on the board right now, we did earn, because we were so bad, a top five pick. But our next pick is into the third round. I would like to ideally find a way to trade back in the first, pick up a mid to early second round pick. I get something maybe if we could trade down with a team in the top 12. Somewhere in that range, let's see. We are looking for a 2024 first and a 2024 second in a deal. Who will offer us that? We get, the, we get the future first and the second from Detroit. Oh, the Eagles. That's a hell of a trade. That's a hell of a trade. 32, 35. But again, should we be getting two first round picks in this offer? All right. All right, we'll do that. We'll take that one. Actually, you know what? Now that we're picking at pick three, not that big of a discrepancy at this point where you probably could just throw the value. Like you thought I was going to make him cheesy. I literally found the quarterback that kind of looked the most like Shador Sanders and made him Shador Sanders. I didn't cheese him up. Didn't make him an 87 X factor in the second round. I think uh, for the fifth year option, for the fifth year option alone, the final pick of the first round in the 2024 NFL draft, the Denver Broncos select... Shador Sanders, Colorado. There might not be value here, but our biggest need, honestly, on the defense right now, outside of a strong safety, looks like a pretty weak safety class. We need a nose tackle. Joey Cook, second round. I'll take that all day. A tackle, C power, C block shit. 6'2", 354, 46 reps. Obviously, nose tackles that have 42 reps. That ended up being amazing. 44 reps. 46. That's 99 strength all day. Give me the hidden dev. Maybe a little bit of a reach then. Here we go and come back. Final pick in the fourth round. Last guy on my board, Clyde Meredith at center to replace Lord Cushenberry at 85 acceleration, 90 strength. Pretty obvious why I drafted him. Easily the best athlete available at the position. And hopefully we get 70, 71 for the athlete known as Clyde Meredith. There's a look at our squad. Now, Shador Sanders not going to get thrusted right into the starting lineup. We can take a little bit of a slow burn approach, appreciate and utilize what we have in Russell Wilson. Not saying Russell Wilson's going to play the whole year, but I do think that mentorship type role is only 20 years old. George Sanders, um, I think it's going to be best for his development. Joey Cook, even though he's normal dev, 71, 73 for the hidden dev center, Clyde Meredith. Let's go. Rest of the draft yeah, is what it is. So year two for our Denver Broncos, and we're going to take a somewhat realistic approach. If Denver ever drafted Shooter Sanders, he would likely sit behind Russell Wilson for a season. Now, Put the little asterisk next to season. Don't know if we're going to go the full season because if Russ is sitting here week six, week seven, whatever our buy is with more interceptions and touchdowns again, I think we just say screw it and throw Shador into the, you know, proverbial throw in the wolves, see what he can do. Uh, but a very interesting skill set. But I, I, I'm fine with the slow burn approach. He's only 20 years old. Um, you know, only two years removed. HBCU, whatever he did last year, Colorado. Is that enough to make the jump to the NFL right away? I, I think it'll be best just to have Russ kind of be that mentor. Does Russ even have the mentor tag? I really hope he does. It would be nice to get that extra. He does. So that's cool. Even though we're paying a lot, a lot, given his contract, we are getting the mentor tag on Russell Wilson, which is going to boost weekly training XP for other players at their position, which is exactly what we need for Shador Sanders. So before we get into the rest of the season, I mean, look at that. We have a new center here in Meredith. Rest of the offense, ready to run it back on the defensive side. Did a little bit of shuffling around. Uh, DJ Jones was a D-tackle, but he's only 305 pounds, so I kicked him to D-end. We'll go with Cook, the big nose tackle that we drafted. Sanders is going to be a starting middle linebacker. Stearns is going to start at strong safety to be our Kareem Jackson replacement. And uh, that's about it. I mean, I think we're, we're going to be better this year, but it still is a little bit of like a transitionary year as we're, you know, working on getting Russ out the door and going to our new quarterback. 
I want to take Shador Sanders in into the passing drill, and we'll see. Get a little sneak preview, what we might have in store. That's actually a great throw. First throw to Marvin Mims. That's going to be his guy, I think, long term. Oh, man. It's the worst. This is the worst drill, man, to be within the 10. It's like, what is this play? How am I supposed to? I can't audible it. I'm going to have to just find a way to make it work. Which we did. Finds Jerry Judy back in the end zone. Outstanding. We got a nice little multiplier here going. So we're going to cheese the multiplier a little bit with some underneath throw. Dot. That's a dot. Another one. Very impressed. We have a shot at gold. That's a ridiculous throw. We have a big time shot at gold. Almost like any completion here. Well, you know we're going to send it. That was a pretty shitty play call to give me for goal. But we'll take silver. That's one skill point. And with the skill point, what Shador Sanders is looking like. We're going to punt. We might as well. It's a slow burn. Put it into the scheme fit. Let's work on getting in more condition to the NFL. And we get the nice plus one throw power off his first upgrade. Bring it to a 90. Well, we're in year two. There's clearly another player we would like to try and bring in if we're going with Shador Sanders. Just so happens the number one overall prospect in this class is a wide receiver. So what we are going to do, and this is only for, we see the first seven picks. He's, he's a freak. He is a freak. We are going to make him into an even bigger freak. And the race is on to suck to get Travis Hunter. Because this is Travis Hunter, when I talked about, like, should I do this rebuild? And everyone's like, yes. They're like, how are you going to make Travis Hunter? When it comes time to make my draft classes, so let's just do it here live. So he's an 81. How I do it for this, and this is just, I guess, the realistic rebuild for the time being until the draft classes are done. And a quick update. Everyone knows me and Bengal are working on draft classes this year on Xbox. He and, well, we're both working on the lists. But he's going to be making the 2024 draft. I'm going to be making the 2025 draft. But right now, there is a glitch when you use a custom draft class. All the bodies and everything just gets reset. So EA has acknowledged that, and they are working on a fix. The patch that came out last week said that they're still working on it. They'll let us know. But essentially, we are like, we're like, what are the odds that if we spend our time on a draft class, that they're going to be like, well, we fixed it, but all existing classes don't work. If, like, there's a chance we put, like, 30 hours into a draft class, and like, nah, it doesn't work no more. So we're kind of taking it cautious, and we're going to wait until the draft class is... Get fixed and then full bore on getting these draft classes ready because I knew I want them. I wanted to start doing realistic rebuilds all the time. But we are going to try and build Travis Hunter for the time being. And what I do for these players, when it's just like I clearly get a creative player, I did it for Marvin Harrison in our Colts rebuild. I take, like, this guy's an 81. So we are going to make an 8100. That is his highest rating. But how the, the sausage is made to get to that 81, we're going to modify a little bit. So obviously, Travis Hunter. I'm going to give him 99 stamina because he played both positions yesterday for Colorado against TCU. Um, over the kick return a little bit, but he's a cover guy. He, he's going to be able to play two positions. Uh, definitely more of a man cover corner using his athleticism. So we're going to give him a little bit of like a press man help here. Uh, we'll make his zone. We'll probably put high 60s as well. Probably put this in low 70s. We'll go like 74 press. 67 zone and we'll make this like a high 70 man let's say his pursuit good athleticism usually want to give those guys a little bit higher pursuit we'll give him 67 we'll leave these kind of as is hit power he's not the biggest guy so we'll probably bring up like low 60s tackling you know, actually made some decent tackles won't go anything crazy play wreck Obviously playing two positions, probably not going to be great, so we'll put that at 59. And what do we got? Jumping. It's, obviously, this jumping is going to be absolutely absurd. See, look, we're still rocking with 81, too, so we haven't had any worries there to that. What we are is we're going to shave off a couple points here. Because I think, you know, obviously at this point, a little bit more of a deep threat. So I'll just bump this up till we get 81 playmaker, as high as we can get it. We'll probably go 85 there. Catching 87 looks good. All right, that took him up to an 82. I, I think we do need to get open field here a little bit. We can probably shave off some stiff iron, break tackle. Get that down. Carrying awareness. 
But the awareness... I mean, the, you can make the argument his awareness should be high, because he's playing two positions. But I do want to try and make him a little more twitchy with the ball, if we can. Okay. All right. Stays at 81. Now, he's a two-way player. And then the dev trait, I just keep it as is. I'll let, you know, superstar works. If it was X-Factor, I would have kept it as an X-Factor, but we'll keep him at a superstar. That's fair. So I decided to wait till our buy. Once I saw that we were losing a bunch of games, I was like, well, you know, tanking's not the worst thing. We did win two wins, which is annoying because there was a lot of teams at the bottom. And uh, if you told me right, I have no shame in being zero wins, 0 and 12 right now. But we are 2 and 10 on a six game losing streak, 2 and 9 on the Texans. You pretty much are trying to suck for Travis Hunter. He is going to require the first overall pick. And at least we hold that right now. We're tied for it. But we also need to think within the, the now. And the now is do we get Shador Sanders some reps? Even if we keep on losing, it's probably not going to make our team any better. But I don't think Russ is cooking. Do not think. He has 14 touchdowns. He has more interceptions. And maybe we, wait, we waited too long. But uh, Shador Sanders has been developing nicely. I think he's up to an 83 overall. So he's, his XP has been great. Helps that we have like the mentorship and all that stuff kind of in line. But I think we'll make the switch. 73, 74 with a boost. Literally the same rating as Russell Wilson. We'll just see what the kid can do to close it out. Hopefully we don't sneak a couple wins. Hopefully he understands the plan that we are trying to suck to get his teammate. But if we do get a couple wins along the way and we had to trade, you know, it is what it is. Uh, look at our salary cap. At least we have cap right now, which is really, really good. Um, all right, well, let's see. We got Garrett Bowles left tackle. We'll see if he'll take one year deal. Yes, he does. We have Javante Williams. I want him to be a running back this year, so we'll get him on a 27 mil. We have Jerry Judy. We'll give him a player friendly $56 million deal. We have Justin Simmons. So this is a little more expensive. We should be able to get this one line. Four years, 66 mil. Definitely wants to stay here in Denver. Quinn Minerts, another player interested. Oh, God. I want to get Minerts. I want to get Barry Browning. I'd like to keep Caden Stearns. I think he's going to be a nice starter for us. I think he can develop into a starter with us. Him, Justin Simmons. So we'll get him locked in. I think if we restructure Russ. Or cut Russ. I, th I think we're going to come right before free agency starts. And I think we're, I'm going to be optimistic that we can both get contracts out. The Minerts and Browning that are going to be a likelihood that they'll get accepted. And then of year two, not good. Got one win with Shador. Finished three and 14. The one win, uh, I just so happy. Oh, they did lose. I thought that was going to cost us. Well, not cost us. I'd pay whatever it would cost to move up the one spot. But uh, yeah, we finished with the number one overall pick. So we are in the driver's seat for Travis Hunter. If that's that's who we want. That's, that's going to be honest. That is who we want. Um, and I mean, I guess you got to say a positive. Our passing offense wasn't. It was the best. It was the shiniest part of this turd this season, uh, which should bode well once once we get fired on all cylinders. Russ just, you know, wasn't it. Shador Sanders went for eight touchdowns and two interceptions in five games, four games. It's not bad at all. I mean, it's not – that's a good race. It's not necessarily prolific, but better than Russ. Run the ball under 1,000 for Javante. That got that to pick up for sure. Jerry Judy at least gets his 1,000. Marvin Mims with a solid year. Dolcich was solid, Sutton not so much. Defensively, Drew Sanders was a tackle machine. What a season for him. 143 tackles, 12 TFLs, 3 sacks. Uh, great year from Singleton as well. 119 tackles, 3 sacks, 4 picks. Over 100 tackles for Stearns. We got 7.5 sacks for Randy Gregory. 12 TFLs, 5 sacks for Baron Browning. And yeah, we had Singleton. All the picks. That is quite impressive. Former CFL Defensive Player of the Year. Patrick... Mahomes was the MVP. I don't think we're going to have anybody for any of these awards. But we can check. Sanders barely played and almost got offensive rookie there. That would have been kind of cool if he could have hit that just because. Just straight up because. Uh, no award winners. Hopefully that is all going to change. Burning the first two years of a five-year rebuild to, to get the Colorado kids. At the end of the year, anytime you're tanking like this, you're always a little bit worried about your dev trades. Luckily, it is pretty hard to lose a star dev so on the offensive side of the ball we're looking at russ did lose his dev trait but Perfect. you know that's kind of expected meredith was hidden dev he is a star on the defense 
Pat Sertain, unfortunately, lost his X-Factor. Drew Sanders gained a superstar. No dev trade for Singleton. I thought he probably did enough to earn it. Caden Stearns gave him a new contract. He goes from normal up to a star dev. And still no breakouts or upgrades for Riley Moss. Come on, man. Holding him down. So this was the period that I hoped that we were going to get an influx of salary so I could offer Quinn Miners and Baron Browning. And honestly, if I had to pick two, I'd go Baron Browning. I think another guy might be getting held down a little bit for the death. I think I think he could be superstar, given given the talent that's there. But he also hasn't had the sacks. I mean, this is just bias because I think that it's only a matter of time that he breaks up. I think he still has that upside in the remaining three years of this rebuild. But we have eight. We're in the red by eight million dollars. So this might be time that we go see where can we get the most savings. And it's Cortland Sutton. It's a D. Okay, I'll tell you right now. DJ Jones gone. Eight million bucks. In the clear there. That's huge. That's a good chunk. Um, I'm not going to get rid of Singleton. He was one of our better players. We'll get Billings. He was just like a free agency sign. That's almost $2 million. And then we're going to have to do it. Our very first time. I've yet to do this in any rebuild. But this is just what you have to do. We are going to restructure Russell Wilson's contract. So that we can keep the team together. Because us 26 mil. Obviously it's going to just... You know what? The way I see it is just combine his salary with Shador Sanders. Appreciate that we're getting the mentorship, extra XP. We're just paying for an extra XP boost right now for Shador Sanders. Perfect. And with the additional salary cap, I think we should probably start here with Miners because he is interested in resigning. Baron Browning. Oh, man, there's like no amount of years that I can offer to make this work. Damn it. All right, we're going to try with Randy Gregory. Really the only other contract worth restructuring. And this is all. To, I don't even know if this will be enough. But this is done to see if we can get just enough change from the couch to be able to offer Baron Browning a contract. And we're going to be able to. Ooh. We'll be tight. Go, oh, we got him. We got him. Oh, man. Oof, we're on food stamps trying to keep this roster together. Obviously, we couldn't dip into free agency whatsoever. It looked like it was like a, you know, pretty average free agency class. A lot of punters and kickers near the top. So it's not like we missed one of those generational, once-in-a-lifetime, perfect role free agency pick classes. It's just your standard run-of-the-mill. There we go with the first overall clip. We've been on the clock for a minute. We have... We earned that right. But with the first overall pick in the 2025 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos are selecting. And honestly, I'm, I'm about to shock the world here. I'm about to shock the world. 438 looks good. Honestly, I'd say this. If this was if this was just a generator play, I don't know if I'd be comfortable. Like, does this guy look like an 81 superstar? Sometimes they can hide. Sometimes they can hide in plain sight a little bit. But I'm going to shock the world in saying... We have wide receivers right now. We're not going to. I think this is Cortland Sutton's last year. But our wide receiver room is full. Our corner room is not. So my intention right now, year one, is Travis Hunter to start as a corner. And then year four and five of this rebuild. Year three of this rebuild, Hunter will be a corner. Year four and five, we'll switch him to wide up. Next up, second round, tough call. This is a tough one. We're going to talk this way. Glenn Justice, A double C, 6'1", 285. So he's built like Aaron Donald. Elite acceleration, great speed. Combine off the charts. He'd be a 3-4 defensive end for us, which is a position that I think we need because we got rid of DJ Jones. The other thing that's kind of staring me in the face right now is, uh, you know, we're looking for corners. We have this guy, Barry Harold. I wonder if he'd be there in the third. See catching a man, a press, six foot five. Like, I feel like there's something there. But I think the gamble will be let's grab that D tackle and then see if we can get Harold with the first pick of the third round. Glenn Justice... Add some competition to the DN room. Happy that he got that dev trade. Dyke, never mind. I guess we have the sec we have the third pick of the second round. Perfect. All right, let's hope that 6-5 corner brings something to the table here. Because there's there's nothing else. There's not one other position. Like I would love maybe a potential tackle. We have Lucas Anthony here at guard. A three B, 6 2 3 15, elite change. Pretty good athlete. Cross the word. Bench press a little low. But I, I think I want to get that 6'5 corner. I think, I think. Perfect. Barry Harold. What's under the hood? 
Oh, I mean, not a freak athlete, but I'll take another depth trade. Screw it. We'll get the clean sweep here. Third round. Clear our board out. Anthony Lucas. Oh, no dev. Should be. I, I still feel confident he'll be like 70 plus. Look at our draft recap. More so. I want to switch. I'd have no idea what his ratings would be as a corner. We just kind of eyeballed it. Uh, rest of the class. Glenn Justice, 71 hidden dev. Barry Harold, 75 hidden dev. We might not need, I mean, I think we, we, we might, we'll probably still go Hunter at corner. We might not need to, man. Barry Harold. Uh, Lucas Anthony, even though there was no dev trade, 73. I got a 70 punter, 70 wide out. Okay, pretty good draft. But let's see. So we know he's the number one player, true talent. Goes from an 82 wide out. I'm going to guess 73. 73 corner. What do you think? Comment, what do you think the rating is going to be? Closest one. If I look through the comments and I see someone that gets this right, I don't know, I'll pin it. 78! Holy shit! Okay. Travis Hunter, corner season for one year. And I'll say uh, he will stay at corner. I really want that connection, Shador Sanders, Travis. But if he gets like four or five picks, wins defensive rookie of the year, how cool would that be? We can win defensive rookie of the year with Travis Hunter and then move into wide receiver and win wide receiver of the year. That'd be badass, huh? It is a new era of Denver Broncos football. Years three, four, and five are when we're ushering in the, the prime time era, we'll call it. We got Shador Sanders as QB1. Finished out last year, looked pretty impressive. Starts as a 74 star. So, you I mean, nothing ridiculous. He's not an X Factor. He's not high 80, you know, high 70s, low 80s, or anything in that range. But we are going to make him a team captain. Definitely shows a lot of leadership traits. And I think, I think this is going to work out. I think we're going to see the best of the offense. Honestly, doesn't have a really high bar. Can you throw more touchdowns and interceptions? If so, you can beat what Russell Wilson's been able to do. In this rebuild, rest of the offense ready to run it back. On the defense, we have a little bit of a transition. The front three, not, not prolific, just solid. Definitely an area that I think we could try to improve. Rest of the front seven, uh, we are starting to see some regression out of Randy Gregory. So we are going to need to get younger there. We are starting to see some regression of Justin Simmons. But still not really worried. I think the secondary overall, though, is a strength of this team. 98 for Pat Sertain, even though he did lose his X Factor. We got Travis Hunter, who's going to start his career as a corner we got Moss and we got the 6'5 Harold, who are all looking to get on the field. But Travis Hunter. I gotta see what let's see what this guy holds up in one of these uh, drills. 85 too. That's a beautiful number. Actually, you know what? I forgot we have Glenn Justice, the law man himself. We're actually gonna put him at defensive end. Even though the rating doesn't really improve that much. You know, it's still a hidden dev player. We'll get him on the field. And we're going to make Travis Hunter our corner two this season. We'll have Moss in the slot. We'll get Harold on the field when we can. Okay, it looks a little bit better. Let's see if we made the right call. Travis Hunter in the DB battle. Welcome to the NFL moment. Is this his best position or is he going to be a wide receiver? Well, we're going to see if he can hang. Oh, there we go. PBU. We got Marvin Mims. So he's not probably one of the worst matchups for him because I think where he is at right now as a player it's is athletics. Is, is his athletic ability. Marvin Mims is our fastest wide receiver. He's not our, like, I feel like if we could go up against a Jerry Jute, if we go up against a Jerry Judy and something like this, we'd have a better shot. If we're going up against Cortland Sutton, get out of here. Love to get a pick. Well, no, we're going up against the, the biggest challenge. This is like one of those ones, too, like, th they set this up in training camp. They want to see speed on speed, and that's what we're going to try to give them here. I want to try to get a silver. Silver would be a nice little overall point upgrade. Come on, man. Get your hands in there. Get some PBUs here. We're right there. Man. Well. Welcome to the NFL. Not retrying it. We're going to keep it. We earned it. We played like shit. Going into the bye week, we are tied atop the AFC West 3-2, and two, which equals the most wins we've had. We have almost a top five offense, top five passing offense, top 10 rushing defense. So everyone is kind of elevating your play. It's not night and day, but it's still really, really freaking good. It's very early. Uh, looking at our contracts, 41 mil. We have Pat Sertan. Let's see if we can get him on a neutral. We do. He definitely wants to still buy in here. We got Greg Dulcich. I think it's a high upside tight end for us right now. We'll get him locked in. Now... The play is all along. Cortland Sutton was going to walk this year, and then that's going to allow us to kick Travis Hunter from corner back to wide receiver. So we're going to continue to operate that being the plan 
We do have Zach Allen here on the defensive line. Get him locked in on a three-year deal. He's serviceable on a D-line that's nothing really that spectacular. Um, damn, can't afford, at least as it stands, Garrett Bowles. If we can get him on a one-year, maybe a little bit later um, in the season, a.k.a. when we get that added influx of salary cap before the offseason officially begins, we'll see if we can offer him some money. And it looks like we won't even have enough to also offer a deal to Singleton. So there is going to be some roster turnover. Goes out year three, improved, still not where we want to be, but we're we're getting there. Defense is getting there as well. We finished nine and eight, second in the division. Only a game back from the Chiefs, all things you know said. Slightly better offense in terms of passing numbers with Sanders. Defense massive leaps and bounds. Hopefully that wasn't because of Travis Hunter, because he's gonna be switching sides here in a second. Shador Sanders. I mean, it's, it's still not amazing, but it's more touchdowns and interceptions, which is better than what we were getting with Russell Wilson. So we can build off of this. Um, Javante, 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns, 1,006 for Mims, 1,006 for Judy. Is there going to be room for another 1,000-year receiver in Travis Hunter? I hope so. Dulcich with this solid year. Defensively, Sanders and Singleton, over 100 tackles. we got 13 sacks for Baron Browning. Hell yeah, worth the restructure to get that onto the books. Randy Gregory, 8, Justice, Glenn Justice. Second round pick. 74 star dev. He was hidden dev. Okay. Pretty good start for him. Interceptions. Pat Sertain with five. Travis Hunter finishes the season. His rookie campaign. Superstar dev. 82. And pretty much every time I upgrade him, I was hoping we're getting speed acceleration awareness because that's going to help his rating as a wide receiver. But I would love for him to win defensive rookie of the year. And I think he did a decent enough job. Uh, let's see. Did he get it? Yearly awards MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes. Offensive player, your Najee. Defensive player, gee, okay, the Steelers. God mode. Oh! Oh, come on. You guys had a chance to do something so cool. And I think that was a respectable season. You probably needed four picks, we'll say, to get him defensive rookie of the year. But that's fine. It's fine. We're going to get to the offseason. We're going to switch sides. And he's going to dominate as a wide receiver. But first, Arsenal. Man United's about to kick off. I'm going to go watch that, and then we'll finish this video. Actually, closing the season out for our dev traits on the offensive side of the ball. Garrett Bowles retired, which makes, I mean, he was a guy that we're trying to see if we can get on a one-year deal. Makes it a little more clear-cut. We have to go get ourselves a left tackle. But on the offensive side, we do have Greg Dalchitz making the jump from star to superstar, which is a dub. On the defensive side, Baron Browning up to a superstar. Grady Gregory did lose his dev, but that was a position that I wanted to go in and improve anyways. Uh, Hunter, Harold, the 6'5 corner. That helps. That helps us in moving Travis Hunter back to wide receiver because we just also drafted a superstar corner last week. We got two superstar corners, but I want to see the rating. So Travis Hunter has the boost. He probably will lose that boost when we switch. But right now, 82 superstar corner. Pretty good year. Switching him back to wide receiver. Let's see if we can give him a little bit better number here. Oh, yeah, he'd be number zero. 100% he'd be number zero. So he goes from 82 to a 83. And he is going to bump right up, probably be our slot wide receiver next season. It's a good role for us, knowing that we have to replace left tackle. But Russell Wilson retires, so we get that massive contract off the books. So now that we have a little bit of money, we're going to try, try and upgrade our defense here. we got Jordan Davis. I, we're you know, definitely on the outside looking in, but we have a really good bid here for Jalen Phillips. Jordan Davis, that's just a straight up upgrade. Jalen Phillips, that would be our Randy Gregory replacement. All right, we get a Randy Gregory replacement. You know what? While we're here, we're looking at Kobe Dean. Just because I'm going into the draft. Oh, God, God damn it. Going to, we need a left tackle and a middle linebacker now. We need to replace Garrett Bowles, who retired, and Alex Singleton, who started with... Um, we started last year with Drew Sanders, middle linebacker. All right, let's go. We have pick 15. I need a left tackle, and I need a middle linebacker. Are we going to get a roll for those? The right tackles look pretty good. I mean, in Madden, you left tackle, right tackle, same thing. Uh, can't really get a true read on the base left tackles here. Jamie Shelley, maybe. Uh, and I'm not too, too far. Ooh, that actually looks like a really good center. Three A's and a C. Six, five, two, nine. I mean, second play tackle. That's a little light in the ass to play left tackle. All right, what do we got here? We got Carl Lynch, two A's and a B. Andy Sherman. We are, wow. Okay. Who's the best athlete of these guys? Lynch, elite agility, elite speed, bench press, little light. The double beyond Sherman. Pass block, run block. I feel a little bit of his elite strength. So this is a little bit old school. 
little less of an athlete, a little more of a powerhouse. But I like the fact that we know B and B versus C and B on the important letter grades. Um, like that D pass box kind of scaring me off. All right, what do we got a middle lot? What do we got at linebacker? A couple got, but not no one first rounder. No, no first rounders. Man, that C's scary. I don't know. I feel like this guy might be the better rating. This guy might have the dev trait. We'll go Sherman because you got the double B, man. Whatever. Worst case, I don't care about line with dev trait. We do roll one here. Good athlete. 93 strength. Powerhouse. All right, let's find us a linebacker. This will be a fun blind pick. Uh, at least in terms of top guys, we have Kevin Hayes here out of Florida. A little bit undersized. 5'11", but he's A pursuit, A zone coverage, elite acceleration, elite speed. It's 4 5. That looks pretty good. BC for him. Oof. I mean, three Bs. Are you a freak athlete? 6 1, 233. Pretty comparable. Runs a 4 4 9 at his pro day, helping his draft stock. We got Woodson here, A, double B, and a C. A little alone on the Zoe coverage. Not a. I would say not a great athlete, but I mean, this, the, the 40's not. Okay. I think all along. This is the guy we want. Marcus Ferguson. Is that the guy we want? Elite jumping, great speed, great acceleration. What does Kevin Hayes have? I don't really care about the block shed that much, even though that is run defender. Elite, elite. I gotta go with this guy. Gotta go. Oh, no, Dev. Come on. Kind of want to swing again at linebacker. Chasing a depth. So we'll go Woodson. Not a great athlete, but he has good ratings. That's the difference maker, and we get the roll of a hidden dev. Okay. So, take a look at our draft recap. Real good first four picks here. Andy Sherman, 75 hidden dev right tackle. Feel good about that. Haynes, no, a little bit of a whiff there, but let me follow it up. What's it? 75 hidden dev in the third. Pretty much what we got last year. Travis Hunter was a corner. Then we said, screw it. Doubled up on a corner. Got another superstar one. Doubling up on linebackers. Well worth the fact, I mean, hey, we got good depth now, but Woodson is definitely going to be our starter. We got a 71 tight end here, Brandon Burnham. Good depth. Really happy with that class. So year four for the Denver Broncos, and it, it's year four. Like, that needs to be understood that, like, our time's running out, man. We, you know, we did take a little bit of a slow burn approach, but when you do that, you're burning seasons, you're burning time with the whole Russell Wilson, Tishidor, Sanders transition. So, like, we got two years to win a Super Bowl. Are we... Confident that that is going to happen? Honestly, I'm, I don't know. It's still an unknown, but happy to have Travis Hunter here now at wide receiver, and we'll see if they can re reclaim that dynamic duo that they had at Colorado. Also, in the fact, Javante's almost a 90. Jerry Judy's developing nicely. Marvin Mims is a great deep threat. Dulcich is now a superstar. Uh, let's just actually just see if we can fix the O-line here. And we replace one Utah line with another one. Andy Sherman comes in to replace Garrett Bowles. Optimistic. He is going to be a great left tackle for us. Uh, on the defense, because we you know you got to take and give a little bit with Hunter leaving, Harold needs to step up. We're going to have him actually play on the outside at 6'5". We're going to have Riley Moss play in the slot. We got Woodson, Sanders, Browning, and Phillips. Hopefully Phillips can help get us a little bit more consistent of a pass rush. But all eyes are on what Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders can do here in year four of this five-year rebuild. All right, we got to see what Travis Hunter can do. This could be rough. We are going up against Pat Sertain, 98 overall corner and like we're trying to do this as a gadget player so we are going to have to be very smart with this oh my god we just ran right by him give me the touchdown i don't even get touchdown points on that hit him with the dipsy doodles he's got he's got to lock us up here look i can't even can't even ask for the football well we got bronze somehow but everyone says c4 to cheese is really gonna do this you need a run I think you got to throw it to the 400, and it's just inaccurate pass. Shador Sanders doesn't want to be here, pissing down his leg. Knows the, the moment's too big. There we go. I'll take silver. Silver still gives us a skill point. And I, I think taking a silver on Pat Sertain, that's, that's impressive. That's that's where the goal, like imagine if we're just on a butt. Like when we do this as a Cardinals franchise, we're running these drills against like 60s. 70 low 70s i don't want to roast my own team here oh come on no chance that's close we'll take it 
Because for me trying to get silver, me trying to get gold, I could be there all day. Trying to work that against Patrick Taylor. I'll take the 1500 XP. Let's get into year four. And midway point of year four, crushing it. Honestly, everyone in the AFC West is unfortunate. We're sitting at top, but we're tied with the Chiefs. Last place, it's one win, which is which is not easy. Um, offensively, still kind of in line. Disappointingly, 28th passing. We always, obviously, we want to see Shador Sanders and those guys going off. But defense has, you know, the additions that we've been able to make are definitely paying dividends. Top five defense. And uh, we'll look at the contracts. And then we have a breakout D-line and linebacker. We'll take it to it live here. First up, we got Drew Sanders. Get him locked in for the remainder of the rebuild. Five-year deal. We have Marvin Mims. We'll give him a player-friendly deal. I think him and Travis Hunter long-term uh, with Jerry Judy. We have Riley Moss, our third corner. Yeah, why not? Right? Why not? Ben Powers, a guard. Get him for the remainder of the rebuild. He's a guy we let walk. He's likely to be the best guard available on the open market. And we will finish up with the fifth-year option of Shador Sanders. But we do have two breakouts here. Head of a home game against a visual rival, Vegas. Raiders, d I'm going to guess it's Cook. It is Joey Cook, my nose tackle. He's got Defensive Player of the Week early in the year with three sacks. Clearly a nose tackle. He's like 330 pounds. Uh, but getting past the rest, we'll take from anywhere. Literally from anywhere. So it'll be cool for him to get. He's on normal. And we have Baron Browning, superstar pass rusher, looking to make the jump to an X Factor here. I'll take one. I'll take a win in one. I'm not going to be greedy and say I want the win in two dev traits. Give me the win and a cook will take the, the low end we do get the win we go to seven to two sitting atop the west offense didn't really improve much but let's see do we hit on our breakouts joey cook is making the jump from normal to a star dev plus five thousand. did baron browning complete the hat trick do we have an x-factor pass rusher two to three ain't bad wow okay i actually thought we had had a shot the one c we lost three of our final four like we were, we were good. Um, Twelve and five, best season we've had so far. A uh, little worried about what the passing offense is going to be. We'll upgrade Shador Sanders here real quick. We'll go field general. Probably should just be committing to strong arm, but I'll take a plus three accuracy. Travis Hunter up to an eighty-eight. Once you spend this, and clearly for his play style, playmaker archetype makes a whole lot of sense here. Um, but yeah, man, last time I checked, this would have been five weeks ago. Passing offense was not good. Bottom tier, we finished 18th. Not bad. We were like 24th. So defense, though, stepped up. Top 10 offense. Real tough matchup here in the playoffs. Pittsburgh has been very good. I've been keeping a keen eye on what they've been doing. Uh, Shooter Sanders doesn't break. I mean, it's just, it, it is something, man. We do a lot of rebuilds here. Lower passing numbers across the board in the sim. For sure. Like, unless I'm just rebuilding teams that don't have good passing offenses. Um, you know, again, that's not a brutal season at all. Definitely not a brutal season. Uh, but usually, if you can get some rushing yards to put with that, some rushing touchdowns. But we do go almost 4,000 yards from scrimmage. Huge year to Devontae Williams. 1,300 yards, 18 touchdowns. Travis Hunter gets his in the slot. This is an offense here in Denver. The slot wide receiver tends to be our wide receiver one. So I kind of knew what we're doing there a little bit by putting Travis Hunter there, but his first year as a wideout, 62 catches, 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns, 8-3 for Judy, 7-3 for Mims. Dolchich with a solid year. Defensively, Sanders and Woodson. Love it. Woodson, the rookie. Hidden dev rookie up to a 76. Pop with a star dev. David Sanders, real nice on the inside of the defense. Baron Browning, Jalen Phillips. Our pass rush is coming alive. Four deep right now. Uh, however, I will say, lack of interceptions from our corner. Certain, 99, Harold, superstar dev. Uh, would like to see a little bit more in the turnover department. Dak wins the MVP, because of course he does. Looking for some Broncos. Come on. Okay, I, was, I would have thought Javante would have been our best shot. He's coming five for running. He almost had 20 rushing touchdowns. Travis Hunter, runner-up for wide receiver of the year. So not quite. I mean, we set the goal of like, man, imagine if you can win defensive rookie of the year and then we move into wide receiver. But it's close. It's close. I like the fact that it, it legitimately is close. Baron Browning runner up for linebacker of the year. So no outright award winners. And it sets up year four here against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I guess the only positive here, we are the home team. Mile High is a pretty good home field advantage. But the Pittsburgh Steelers have the number three offense in the NFL Average defense, but they are pretty good at stopping the run, and we really do like running the football with Javante Williams. So we will see. If we lose, is what is there a good team? You can kind of 
Except that, I don't know why, whatever the title update, it removed you seeing what just happened for some reason. Like, now I gotta go in. Alright, well, I had a weekly award winner in the Steelers win, and it's Javante going against an elite run defense. Javante goes for 93 on the ground, two rushing touchdowns, as well as a 43-yard receiving tutty from our 90 overall running back. Love seeing that. I love getting our first playoff victory. Again, it's year four. We, sh we get, you know. No more, no better time than now to start winning games. Now we have the 10-7 Buffalo Bills, who have the best defense in the NFL. Offensively, Josh Allen and company. Look, Josh Allen with 23 touchdowns. It's hard to get 30-plus tutties here. Unfortunately, we fall. Wish I could see the score right away, but we do have an award winner in a defeat. Drew, Sa uh, Drew Sanders there, seven tackles and a sack. But unfortunately, this is all setting itself up for a year five Super Bowl or bust. With Denver Broncos staring down the barrel of our first Madden 24 rebuild that we don't win a Super Bowl in five seasons. As far as Deftridge are concerned, as we close the season, Javante Williams makes the jump from star to superstar. We do, unfortunately, lose the superstar on Greg Dulcich. Travis Hunter keeps his. Let's be honest, we're just going to make him wide receiver one at this point. Him, Judy, Mims, pretty universal across the board. I uh, wasn't really expecting a Deftridge for Sanders. Didn't really have a whole lot of tutties. Um... Pat Sertain loses his superstar. That seems harsh, to say the least. We lose his superstar on Drew Sanders. Jalen Phillips gains a superstar and an X-Factor on Baron Browning, a man that we decide to restructure the contracts of a couple players to make sure he stays in the building, and it has absolutely paid up. We'll give him a little C on his chest as well. There is only one player in all of free agency that makes any sense for us to sign, so I, I will overpay. He has no interest. I'm going to give you literally. There's no realistic rebuild. Even if it is realistic, you are the one guy, and we have this much salary cap, knowing that this is our window. I'm going to give him 20 and 20. Three years, $120 million offer for Chris Jones. And it barely gets us to the table. But he does sign, because he knows. He knows. And we just got we just stole that from our rival, the Kansas City Chiefs, who also had Travis Kelsey retire this offseason. So they're going to suck. And with our final first-round pick of the rebuild, who is going to be our blind pick stud? I don't need anything. Our team is complete across the board, so we are just in the business of finding the best player. And I think we're going to be drafting a, a, center, a center at this point. Actually, both those tackles look fairly serviceable. That's actually not a brutal defensive end. That's also not another brutal. A tackle, B power, B block, uh, A block shed. Greg Jennings. Isn't the guy that won... Uh, that Ken Jennings. He got one like Jeopardy a bunch of times. Um, I'm going to pick the better athlete between Jalen Robinson and Jennings. His elite strength, 40 reps on the bench press. Good, good, and speed acceleration. What does Mr. Jennings have? Double A's with a B. Elite strength. Solid gray. Ah, we're going Greg Jennings. Ah, oh, whatever. And look at the recap, Greg Jennings, 74, normal. Not the best. I will say I did consider trading a bunch of my picks to get the first overall pick, which was a tight end who, I don't know, man. Does tight end go much higher than 79? Kelsey just retires. This is the Kelsey regen. We get a little FIFA on here. Let's see. What's the dev trade? If it's star, then no. If it's X Factor or something like that, they straight up put this in here because Kelsey just retired. What a pick. I probably should have traded up for him. This is our final work. What does a Denver Bronco rebuild look with realistic Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter? Because you're not going to get like an x fact Shador Sanders is not going to be some generational quarterback. Like right now, even if he declares, he's not going ahead of Caleb Williams or Drake May. He's probably going to be a second rounder, I think. Like that's probably where you would draft him anyways. So it's been a realistic approach and he's been solid. 83 star, nothing ridiculous, not MVP. But he's been solid and definitely, I think, enough talent there with, you know, Judy and Mims and Javante and Dulcich and this offensive line and obviously Travis Hunter. I think we got our work cut out for us. It's definitely the most nervous I've been going in year five so far in about a 24 rebuild in terms of like, are we actually going to be good enough to win a Super Bowl? But, you know, it's year five, so if we can at least get in the Super Bowl, I can hop in and try and help out where I can. It's not always automatic, but it does help. We got to get there first. Defense. Has been the strength of this team. We added Chris Jones. I'm going to kick him to defensive end. Give him a, a little bit different late career position change, which which should work in our scheme. Baron Browning's next factor. Our front seven is very good. Our back end's also 
really really solid no glaring weaknesses a complete defense and an optimistic offense let's see if we can get Spencer, uh, Shador Sanders here 30 plus touchdowns and also maybe a first round buy that'd help and then you five you gotta run the car didn't even win the division 11 and 6 Kansas City down Chris Jones and Kelsey still win the West uh, offensively top 10 defensively top five so that's pretty good for the Denver Broncos Shador Sanders to get 30 got 33 let's go top five that's a hell of a year that's a hell of a year for him 33 touchdowns four picks 3900 yards take that 13 and 8 Javante Sanders just ran the football this season for some reason his best year Travis Hunter was great 82 catches 1300 yards will round up to 11 touchdowns Judy almost got a thousand Mims and Dolch it's serviceable numbers defensively Sanders and Woodson over 100 we got eight sacks from Browning eight from Zach Allen seven and a half from Chris Jones five from Jalen Phillips two picks Pat Sertain leads the team but a really solid year from say he but he better make this yes he did top five in the MVP so he's speaking at the right time one of those rebuilds where you just kind of wonder how many more years if we went like two more years if we went seven years instead of five where would Shador Sanders get to in terms of a quarterback but things are here nor there we are five-year rebuilds this is as close as it's been for us I have no idea what this we could just be one and done it could be one and done this could, it could be like just quickly ripping a band-aid off this is our first non-Super Bowl rebuild but we get a nice victory there. No idea what happened. <laughs> Why did they get rid of that? Why would that be a patch of any sort? But we handle business. 34-10. Was it particularly close? Shador Sanders, 200 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. We ran the ball efficiently. Get it, man. Where is this rushing coming from him? Had no rushing. And then this year, he's the dual threat quarterback. Travis Hunter had a receiving touchdown. Second half, Zach Allen. Second half, Chris Jones. A lot of pressure. And we're moving on. So the prize that we won is to take on the one seed Baltimore Ravens got a good role Kansas City lost and Dallas lost so the two teams I mean Atlanta is also really good Atlanta's really good all right well as long as we, we don't have losing the Chiefs or Cowboys I guess that's a little bit of a dub but this is a tough one 14 and 3 Ravens now we're better overall we've rebuilt a stronger team but they are a top five offense Number two defense. I think we need to upgrade our players. Give us the best shot. It is Shador Sanders. So we'll spend this upgrade with all the boosts. He's playing 93. That is ridiculous. I have plus six, like, confidence. Free boost for But, I mean, again, got to give Sean Payton Creighton, uh, credit. If you're going to look at Sean Payton and say, what does he still offer? He is a QB guru type guy. So for Shador Sanders to get that type of boost, kind of realistic. And, oh, man, I thought that was an L. I thought at the end of the day, that was a 28-17. We're meeting the Jags. 14 scored. Shador Sanders didn't do much. But another rushing touchdown. Four total. Just could not stop our rushing offense. Defensively, Jalen Phillips with a sack. And that has punched our ticket to the AFC Championship game. A win away from having a chance. We had the Jags on the other side. It's Seattle and the Chicago Bears. Doug Peterson. Sean Payton, what are the Jags looking like? They're top 10. They're not anything special. 84 overall. I still think this is a week. We got to we'll spend our upgrades here. But I don't know. I'll tell you what. This Arsenal game's still going on. We just should have got a penalty there. We got a penalty. Looks like a penalty. They make this penalty. We're going to keep it live. They make this penalty, and we lose this because I'm, we're due. I'll go year six. Just because Shador Sanders starting to peak. Kai Havertz, who's the worst. Oh, did they give him a dive? Give me a sec here. Watch. Look, this is the kind of credit. I'm a dire Arsenal fan, but to get this rebuild, I'm watching this freaking game on my phone. Give me the penalty. I think the penalty is stand. They make this, it gives us the insurance. I think we're gonna need it. Oh, they're VAR in it. Okay, while VAR is going on, Pivots, this is like the only thing I can compare that to is Brock Osweiler. Remember Brock Osweiler? It's 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 topical. We're gonna make a little soccer to Denver Bronco reference. Remember, like Brock Osweiler, like didn't Denver trade for him to like essentially eat his contract, but they basically traded for an expensive quarterback. 
That's exactly what this Kai Havertz guy is for Arsenal. Played on Chelsea, was a bust. We bought him for $65 million, knowing he's a bust, and he plays like a bust. Hopefully he drew a penalty here. But either way, while we're operating, um, we potentially have a year six. A year six could be slated at this penalty. Oh, he's going to the VAR. We lost. We won. We, we won. We won the Super Bowl. Okay, we don't need it. We do not need it. Oh, we don't need it at all. 41 at 25. Shador Sanders, four touchdowns, one pick. Javante was great. Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders, biggest moment of their careers. And it's like the freaking Colorado TCU game all over again. Seven catches, 87 yards, three touchdowns, the hat trick. Two and a half sacks for Baron Browning, sack and a half for Jalen Phillips. And the Denver Broncos, not even like by the skin of our teeth are in the Super We kicked the ass of everybody that stood in our way. We are in the Super Bowl against Seattle. What's the call here on this penalty? It's a penalty! Penalty? No penalty. Classic, man. I've been a soccer fan long enough. You know, when you play Manchester United, it's fucking no penalty. When you play Manchester United, the refs always favor them. They're the Dallas Cowboys of soccer. Either way, we are in the Super Bowl. We're going to lock it back in here. We're feeling good. Do we have any dev trade increases? Hunter played well. Travis Hunter might be an X factor. But we're going to hop in and try to help this one. I don't want this being our first out. Travis Hunter up to an X factor. Didn't get the development of Shador Sanders, but Hunter makes sense. Again, the Travis Hunter's probably going to be a top five pick. Like he's it's he's literally you run into issues when you have these positionless defensive players. We've seen it with Isaiah Simmons. We've seen it with Hassan Riddick when he was coming out. It took a little while to figure out what he's going to play. But I don't know if we've ever had that on the offensive side of the ball. Where it's like a guy that like could probably start in the NFL at corner and wide receiver. And he's playing both at the same level in college. But that all being said, whenever it comes time for Travis Hunter to declare, he is going to be, you know, a top tier pick for sure. I don't know the same could be said for Shador Sanders. And I think that this rebuild's kind of represented, but we'll take the massive plus seven boost that has Sanders playing like a 94 overall quarterback. Uh, we did lose the X Factor on Chris Jones, which kind of stinks. No other dev traits up or down. But tail of the tape going into this Super Bowl against the Seattle Seahawks. Eh, we are the favorites. We have five overall points better. We are 1.01 overall better in the offense. We are better in the defense. There is nothing they are better than us at. They might have a little more experience, but this is our time to get our Super Bowl. All right, no penalty, so this is it. We're just going to give us the same rules that we had the last time we helped. We get three times. I get three times I can interject myself. I don't have to use all three, but I can't go over all three. We are the favorites. We should be winning this game. And opening drive, we're trading field goals. At least we're not behind the sticks here. All right. This is time one that I'm coming in because I feel like we need to at least... Do our best to get this team tied up at 10 going into halftime. We got Judy on the slant. We got Judy on the slant. There's no safety over top. Jerry Judy runs. Oh, that is that is, uh, that is a gimme. That is a freebie. And they got speed, man. We're not going to be able to just hit our deep shots. They got Tariq Woolen. They got Devin Witherspoon. They got real good corners. I'd love to see us. Hey, we get the touchdown without me having to hop in. I love that. They go for it on fourth down. It is a turnover on downs. We're going to come in. This is time two. Perfect. Clock's rolling. No pressure whatsoever. Let's get this first down. This first down would be huge if we can get it. Do we Do we try to force it? Oh, no, I don't think we force it to Hunter. I think we just try to get this first down with our legs. Go! Oh, we'll just slide. Just clock right now as long as we can keep making them use their timeouts that is going to bode well as we make it to the red zone it is third down clock's rolling first down it's so where's hunter you got it we got it we got to slant cheese it here 
Boom! Oh, Travis Hunter Super Bowl for the Denver Broncos. The streak. They made it close. The streak continues. But not today. Not today, evil man. God did. God did. That's what they that's what they were saying after Colorado beat TCU. God did. No one believed in us. God did. I didn't believe in this team, but someone was watching over top. And they said, C4, your streak is going to continue for Super Bowls here in Madden 24. You know those asterisks because you're hopping in and playing the games in year five. Eventually, there's going to be a time that, like, there's nothing I can do. We are going to lose. But it is not here in this very specific rebuild. And that's, you know, at the end of the day, that's what rebuilds are about. Like, what, what would it have been fun? Do a Denver Bronco rebuild where we just stuck with Russ, you know? No, this is cool. Let's take the hyped up. Colorado Buffaloes, Shador Sanders, Travis Hunter, put them on the Broncos and win a freaking Super Bowl. And that is exactly what we've been able to do here today, guys. So I hope you did enjoy. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Man, should we should we look at our stats? Actually, we forgot to do Let's go look at our stats and then we'll do the wrap up. MVP, Shador Sanders. All right, look at the career stats. We got 12,000 yards passing, 92 touchdowns, 24 picks for Shador Sanders. I definitely think best football is ahead of him, but you know, he was solid. He was solid in this region, and I'm glad that he wasn't ridiculous to overpower because everyone just said, well, yeah, no doubt you won a Super Bowl. You had the best quarterback. He handpicked the best quarterback and wide receiver prospect. We grinded with Shador Sanders. wasn't easy. 6,700 yards, 52 touchdowns for Javante. Uh, almost 7,000 yards, 25 touchdowns for Judy, 4,200 yards, 31 touchdowns for Mavrimins, 3,700 yards, 33 tutties for Dalsich, 2,300 yards, 23 touchdowns for Travis Hunter. Two years as a wide receiver starter, one year as a DB, where he had 68 tackles, two interceptions, I believe. Just ridiculous player. Uh, Justin Simmons led this rebuild, 844 tackles. We have 51 and a half sacks, Baron Browning, 43 for Zach Allen, 38 for, Dilla, uh, for Phillips there, 32 picks. Justin Simmons, 15 for Pat Sertain, 5 for Caden Stern. So it all is said and done, man. Very good rebuild. Got close. Easily the most worried that I've been that we were not going to be able to secure that Super Bowl dub when all is said and done. But we were able to. Sanders and Hunter, they took their winning ways from Colorado, brought it to the NFL, brought it to the same state. That is awesome. So with that being said, if it is your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. I'd like to hit a thousand likes on all of our videos. Leave a comment in the comment section below about what rebuild you guys want to see next. And it doesn't have to just be solely a team. It could be something like C4, do what we saw today. Do Denver, but bring Sanders and Hunter. Do any of those other teams. I'm open to any and all suggestions. So let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Long weekend vibes. New episode of Pink Slips. I'll see you then. Peace out, love you. Have a good one.